Hi, my name is Elizabeth Green Musselman. I'm the designer of the mitts that you're about to start. And especially if you haven't made fingerless gloves before, I wanted to look at the structure of the mitt before you get started so that you can see what you're going to be doing as you go along. I think it helps to have some understanding of kind of the full map of where you're going before you get started. So here is the finished mitt, and I want to show you some of the details before you get started. You'll notice, first of all, that the entire mitt is worked with a, an overall ribbing structure. So it's a knit two purl two rib, and it's really, really stretchy. So if you're at all worried about which size to make, um, you don't really have to worry that much because the, the fabric is so stretchy. And if you look at my hand and you look at this mitt, they look like they wouldn't fit, but actually it does. Um, this is the larger size. Actually, sorry, it's the smaller size. It still fits my hand, which is actually pretty large for a woman's hand. I would say if you are going to make these gloves for anybody, um, any men or women with larger hands, I would actually make the larger size. And um, for most women and uh, teenagers and children, I would make the smaller size. Really the only kinds of people that the, these aren't going to fit particularly well are somebody who's, say, about four or five years old and younger. Okay, so that's kind of the overall fabric. Um, you get started down here and just do a regular long tail cast on or whichever cast on you prefer, anything that's you know nice and stretchy so that your arm can get into it. And you work up, I say five and a half inches, but you can really make it any length you want. Um, you can make them go over your elbows, you can make them stop just below your wrist, it's really up to you. That length is entirely knitter's choice. The next part that you get to is called the thumb gusset. And if you haven't made one of these before, it's basically this area right here that widens out, widens out the hand before the thumb actually gets separated off. Because if you look at your hand, and you've got a fairly narrow stretch right here, and then as soon as it meets your thumb, you need to widen out the width of the glove so that it can fit around your whole hand comfortably. So that's what this thumb gusset does. And essentially what you're doing here is at the beginning of the round, you're doing two increases, a make one increase and a make, two make one increases, a make one left and a make one right. And they continue to spread out from each other, knit stitches in between, until the hand is wide enough for your whole hand to fit into. Once you have the correct number of stitches, once you've increased the, the proper amount, you want, to, um, you want to try to get to the point where you, you might want to knit even for a little bit until you're end, at the end of one of these stripes, but don't fuss with that too much. You can always just leave, leave this color, like let's say you were halfway through the gray and you've just finished all of the thumb gusset increases um, you don't really want to knit too much farther up before you start the hand. So what I would do is just go ahead and leave off wherever you are in the color sequence, even if it's in the middle of a color. And then you're going to separate these stitches off for a little while just by putting them on some waste yarn. Um, you're just going to leave them off the needles for a while unworked. Then you're going to work the hand stitches up here to the top. And again, you know, you can, I recommend trying to finish one of the stripes, you know, let's say the brown in this case. But here I was, you know, I was really starting to get a little too close to the top of the hand and I didn't want to go much further. So I just made one of the fingers, well, I made the pinky brown, just like this one, so I could finish out that color. And then I made the rest of the fingers different colors. I'll come back later and explain how to do each of these steps up here at the top, but I just want to show you the overall structure right now. The last thing you do on each glove is you come back and put these stitches, the ones for the thumb, back onto some needles. And then you just work the thumb and knit two purl two rib. Um, you're going to be picking up a few stitches right in here just to close up the gap a little bit. And then you just use all of your tails to sew up 
the little areas in between the fingers that will probably have little holes in them, and this area right here between the thumb and the hand. And that's it. Well, then you have to make the other one.